Hello, welcome to uh, contributing to GitLab documentation tutorial. My name is Ray Paik. I manage the code contributor program here at GitLab and I'm honored to be here with uh, uh, two of my colleagues from the technical writing team, uh, Marcel and Russell, who will, you'll hear from later in the presentation as well. Uh, so we'll cover a few uh, items here in, in the agenda. I'll cover like the first three topics that are listed here. I'll give a brief overview of the community, uh, why you want to contribute to documentation at GitLab and you know how you get started. And then I'll turn things over to Russell who will go through, uh, show you the detailed steps on how, how you actually make contributions to GitLab docs. Uh, we have these steps uh, listed in one of the slides, but he'll actually uh, uh, go through a demo of uh, the steps you need to take to make contribution. Uh, and I'm sure you'll find it very helpful. And then he'll turn things over then to Marcel, who's going to also talk about some of the tips and tricks. Like I think it's like style guys and other items that, uh, as you start, uh, as you start or continue to contribute to documentation, you'll uh, you'll find helpful. And you know how to get help and uh, and and other items, and and then he'll help uh, wrap things up uh, for us. Uh, so without further ado, I'll just move quickly into um, a quick overview of the GitLab community. Uh, several weeks ago, we celebrated uh, surpassing the 3,000 contributor milestone in the, in the history of GitLab, so we're very excited about that. Uh, and as you can see from the chart on the right-hand side, we just about doubled the number of contributors between 2018 and 2019, which was really exciting. Um, so if you haven't contributed before you're, and you're, you're, uh, you're joining the, our community, first of all, welcome. Um, but I also wanted to point out that you're, uh, you're joining a, a, a community that's been growing over the past several years. So i um, like to uh, welcome you once again and uh, uh, hope to see a lot of you starting to contribute to GitLab docs and, and other areas of GitLab's, GitLab as well. Um, so why contribute to documentation? And some of these points are relevant uh, for, for not just for GitLab, but other, other open source projects as well. Um, uh, usually when you onboard into a new community, uh, documentation is a good place to start for, for a couple of reasons. I mean, one is that uh, you typically don't have a lot of dependencies when you're working on like a documentation related uh, issues or you wanna enhance the documentation. Uh, as opposed to when you're trying to like add a new feature uh, to any software project, you, you have a lot of dependencies you may have to deal with, things like the UX um, and database and uh, other backend issues. But for uh, typically for documentation, you don't have to deal with other uh, software dependencies. Uh, so it's it's relatively easy place to get started, and you don't necessarily need like in-depth technical knowledge of a software architecture, for example, if you're contributing to code. So I think it's a it's a great place to get started. Uh, and also at GitLab, the process that you go through in, in terms of contributing to documentation is identical to the process that you'll need to follow for contributing to like GitLab code, as as an example. Uh, so once you sort of get familiar with the process of like finding issues, you know, you're getting your merge request triage, review process, and finally getting it merged, whether it's for documentation or code, the processes are identical. So once you get familiar with the process in docs, uh, you're not going to have to relearn uh, or learn something completely different when you move over to other areas of GitLab product. So we think it's a really good place to get started and uh, want to encourage you to uh, uh, you know, get involved in contributing to GitLab documentation. And I mean, the final thing I want to say, like at GitLab, I mean, documentation is a first class citizen. Like the way you find where the docs are uh, for each of the project, uh, you just look for the docs folder or, or directory and, and to find all the, all the files yeah, like all the documentation related files there. So it's in the same place in the, in the repo of a project where you find code and other resources for the project. Uh, so how do you get started? I mean, this is when you first get started in a new open source community, like uh, finding uh, things that you can work on or contribute to, it's, 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 it's sometimes a challenge. Uh, so I have a couple of uh, uh, examples here that, that you can follow. And I also already ran this query. Um, earlier today too so that we don't have to deal with potential delay so i ran the query here 
uh, with the labels accepting merge requests and documentation. So you see a list of like 750-ish issues here that you can look at and pick up. And, uh, and you can continue to further uh, refine the query uh, to narrow down the list. Uh, so I'm going to add one more label here. Uh, good, time, good for first-time contributors is another label that we have uh, to highlight issues that we want to encourage first-time contributors to work on. And if I rerun the query, the number should go down way below 748, and yeah, we're down to 14. Uh, so this is sort of another way to to look for issues that uh, that you can help us with. Um, so I encourage you to sort of uh, you know play around with the queries and and to narrow down on on the list that 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 you might be interested in working on. Um, uh, the other item, I mean, finally, the, the other item I wanted to quickly point out was that if you want to start working on like improving documentation, uh, you don't need to have like an associated issue uh, like uh, attached to it. Like if, if you want to, you know, start submitting an MR right away, like you don't need to go through the process of looking for an issue or, or opening an issue. So if you have something quick that you want to contribute to, just start working on an MR and, and, and ping us uh, to get our attention. So I just wanted to point that out really quickly. Uh, and, you know, good places to start. I uh, want to point out uh, a couple of things here. So if you go to any, like a documentation pages under docs.gitlab.com, at the bottom of each page, you'll find this like a uh, highlighted areas uh, in the purplish color they call help and feedback. And you'll see this link um, that says edit this page. So if you click on this link, uh, you'll be taken directly to the page where, where that documentation is. So you don't have to hunt through the directory structure or folders to find out where that file is. Uh, it'll take you straight to that page and I'll like demonstrate that really quick. So here is a main docs.gitlab.com page. Uh, like I said, if you scroll down, you see this uh, section here, uh, and then click on this edit this page link, and it takes you directly to that file. Uh, so we want wanted to sort of make that easy for people who, who wanted to contribute to our documentation. Um, and and just a quick thing, uh, you'll also find the edit this page link at the bottom of each of our web pages. Like if you go to any of the pages under about .com, whether it's a partners page, a community page, if you see something that, that you wanna help help us improve, like click on that link and it works the same way as, as documentation. Uh, so I'll, uh, I'll stop there and I'll turn things over to Russell who will walk you through the steps on uh, you know, how you actually uh, contribute to GitLab documentation. All right, off to you, Russell. I'm Russell Dickinson from the GitLab technical writing team. Everyone's welcome to contribute to GitLab. In this demonstration, I'll show you how you can contribute to the product documentation. You'll need a GitLab account, so if you don't already have one, go to gitlab.com and click register. Fill in the details on the form and click register again. To simplify this demonstration, I've already created a personal GitLab account and logged in, but you'll be prompted to log in when needed. So let's assume you're browsing the GitLab documentation and you see something you'd like changed. Maybe something could be better explained or you notice a mistake. There's no need to first raise an issue in an issue tracker. Instead, you edit a copy of the page and ask that those changes be accepted into the main GitLab project. In GitLab terms, you raise a merge request. In this demonstration, I'll fix a spelling error, but the principle is the same if, if you wanted to make a more significant change. So in this case, I'm browsing the GitLab documentation style guide, and I noticed that the word following here is spelled incorrectly. So I wanted to submit a correction to that. So I scroll to the bottom of the page, and at the bottom here in the help and feedback section, Click edit this page. That loads the file in the GitLab editor. We've got two editors, the basic editor and the web IDE. In this case, I'll just use the basic editor. So I click edit and it opens the document in edit mode. Now the text input field is already focused. So I want to find the spelling error. So 
control F. And do a search for the spelling error. Having found it, I'll correct that spelling error. And then I can scroll to the bottom of the editor, just here outside the focus of the text box. And what I first need to do is to provide a commit message. This is a brief description of why this change is being made. That is the motivation of the change, not an explanation of what's been changed because that's already available for anyone who's viewing it using the Git. So in this case, fix spelling error in style guide. And it's important when the commit message with the full stop. Now, when I click commit changes, I've already created a fork or a copy of the GitLab project. If you don't already have an existing copy, or again, a fork of the project, one will be created. But in this case, because I've already created a fork, it's noted here that a new branch will be created in your fork and a new merge request will be started. So when I click Commit Changes, it'll create a new branch containing the changes that I'm, I've made, and it'll open the merge request form. Just wait for that to open now. Okay, so it's opened the merge request form, and you'll notice here that in my personal namespace, I've got here the fork of the GitLab project, and this is the name of the branch. So this merge request is requesting that the changes in that branch be merged into. This is the GitLab org namespace, the name of the project, and the branch, in this case, master. Now it's copied the description or the change uh, message into the title here. And I need to provide a description. Now we've got some template descriptions already available within the GitLab project. So from this drop down, I'll select documentation and click apply template. Now it does populate the description with quite a lot of text. Most of that is of use or of interest only to the GitLab technical writers. What I can do here for the moment, for the purpose of this demonstration, is remove the comments here at the very top. And then I can describe briefly what the merge request does. So in this case, again, I can say fixes spelling error in style guide. And I can leave it at that for the moment. So I scroll down. I don't need to worry about any of these fields at the moment. I can let, click Submerge Request. And the merge request will be created. So I'll just wait till that completes. So here's the merge request. Its current status is known up here as open. It was open just now by me. And I've got a badge here that this is my first contribution to the GitLab project. It's got the description here, it's got various details, and again, quite a complex description, but we don't need to worry about that. So from here, this is all you need to do in order to raise the merge request. What will now happen is someone within the GitLab technical writing team will uh, notice the merge request, be informed of its uh, creation. They'll then review it. And if it's uh, acceptable as it is, it will be merged and you'll be notified. If it needs any further work, again, someone within the team will provide comments. And you'll be notified of those comments, generally via uh, email. You can also view those comments, of course, within GitLab itself by revisiting the merge request, and you may want to make note 
of that URL. Otherwise, you can find the merge request by doing a search. So again, if there are any further changes that are requested by the GitLab technical writing team as part of this merge request, they'll be noted in the comments. You can respond to those comments. And once you've re reached the resolution on the merge request, the merge request will be merged. And that's um, pretty much the docs contribution process complete. All right, thank you for your attention. Bye. Hi, my name is Marcelo Miro, and I'm also a technical writer with GitLab, and I deal mostly with CI/CD documentation. I'd just like to go over some final points and review what Russell did in his demo. Uh, let me start by sharing my screen. So as Russell went over, you have to make sure you create a GitLab account first. And once you've found a doc page that uh, has something that can be improved or changed, uh, you scroll to the bottom and click the edit this page link at the bottom of the page. Uh, after you make your changes, um, if you have not created a fork for the project, you will be prompted to create one when you click the button. But um, that's a quite an easy process. And if you've already created uh, a merge request, uh, the fork should already be created. Um, after you've made your changes, write a commit message and click commit. And following the steps, you can create the MR uh, or merge request, just like Russell said. Um, one thing that we didn't go over is going through the review process. So I just like to go over that quickly. So if we look uh, at Russell's merge request that he created, you can see um, it is exactly as it was when he left it. But if you look below, you can see that Ray has actually grabbed this. Um, he's added the documentation label, and we have a group of labels over here that'll reflect the type of work that was done, and usually the type of document. It could be uh, different it'll be assigned to different groups depending on the labels. But Ray has looked at it and he said, actually, this is fine. We can look at the changes here and see that, yeah, he added the I, fixed the spelling, and everything is good. So Ray approved the merge request and he merged it into uh, the documentation repository. Um, if there was something that he'd like changed, maybe an alternative spelling, maybe it was a big merge request. Um, he'll probably uh, forward this to a member of the technical writing team and they will then uh, look at it more carefully, possibly make some suggestions uh, and send it back to you by pinging the contributor with an, with an at mark and, the, and your username and let you know, hey, we'd like to do this in a different way, or maybe we'd like to restructure it. And uh, after hopefully one round or a couple rounds of reviews, everything will be ready and we'll be able to merge it. Um, some important things is that we have uh, two important guides. We have a general guide to documentation, and we also have a style guide that represents the GitLab style. So if uh, I go to that page, the first one, the documentation guidelines uh, has a bit more technical information about how the doc site is generated. You can see that there's um, information about the different projects that we have documentation for. Um, but one thing that I'd like to jump down is to show that it is possible to actually preview the changes that you make locally, which is very interesting. If you'd like to read it. We also do a lot of testing. So we have some details about testing in here. Um, if you go to the style guide, this is quite a large document, but it goes over in fine detail all the various uh, standards that we use for our documentation. So if you look on, on in the right bar, 
you can see that we explain how to do lists in the GitLab style, how to do tables, how to do links. And, and it, it's quite large. There's quite a lot that, uh, that you can learn about. But when you're first starting out, you don't need to know all of this and you don't need to read through every single little point. Um, making typo changes, making just changes where you're just editing text is fine. Uh, and if there's anything that is different from the style guide, the technical writer who reviews it will be able to uh, explain that to you. And often we don't need to change anything because a lot of our contributors are very good at writing. Um, one thing to, to mention is that um, there are commit message requirements for GitLab employees. When you're submitting from a fork, we don't check the commit messages very carefully, but we would like it if the commit messages are not too long, uh, at least three words, and explain what's happening uh, in the merge request. Uh, it doesn't have to be very wordy, but just give a little bit of detail to make it easier for the reviewer. Um, if you need to give a lot of detail, add a title, a blank line, and then you can write as much as you want in the body below that after a blank line. Another point is that we test all of our docs in the CI/CD pipeline. So if we come back to Russell's merge request, if you scroll down a little bit, you can see that there's actually a merge request pipeline that ran and it went green. So what happens is we have a, a bunch of tests that make sure our documentation renders properly, follows standards as much as possible. So it, it is possible that you make a submission and this will not be green, it'll be red. It's usually because of perhaps a link style that, we, that the tools have detected won't render properly. It could be um, something about a list, again, that might not render properly. It's generally structural. If it's red, you can click on it, and at the bottom, it'll give you a message about what needs to be fixed. If you're not sure, you can just contact uh, the reviewer who's looking at your merge request, and they'll be able to explain what needs to be fixed, or possibly just suggest it directly in your merge request. Um, Finally, once you get comfortable making changes in the UI, like in Russell's demo, you can actually start making changes locally with an editor. Uh, I use VS Code. A lot of us use VS Code right now. Uh, so it's very much like GitLab's engineers. Um, if you are using the editor, there is a big advantage. Uh, there's more to learn, but once you have it set up in VS Code, let me bring back the documentation guidelines. And if I come back to testing here and local linters, we do use two tools called Markdown Lint and Veil, which run various tests. Uh, if you are interested in, in trying this out, you can actually configure your editor to verify Veil and Markdown Lint uh, Markdown Lint and Veil so that any issues will be displayed directly in your editor even before you submit anything to GitLab. So if they say, oh, this, this link style uh, doesn't match the style guide, it'll highlight it in red or yellow or blue. It'll also give suggestions saying, oh, actually, if you're using f this particular grammar tense, maybe you don't want to use that or this is not a word that's in the dictionary. And there's a lot of different tests that'll help you um, get your first submission merged faster. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, I believe this uh, presentation will be shared, but you can go to the contributors Gitter uh, channel and ask questions. You can also find the technical writing team members and their assignments on the team handbook page so that when you create an MR, you can at message them directly. Um, if you don't know who, you can just at message the entire team. So just to show that, for example, one final example, um, uh, 
this is the CICD pipelines page. Maybe I found a mistake. I can scroll to the bottom and edit this page as per usual. But before I start making changes, I can actually see at the very top that there's some extra data and it says it's stage verify group continuous integration. And there's a link to the team page right there. You can use this link to go to the team page, the technical writing team page, and go to the assignment section and it'll show uh, who is assigned to that. So if you remember that was verify continuous integration. So we can look for verify continuous integration and it's me that's the technical writer. So you can ping me directly in the merge request and say, could you take a look at this? Uh, we also have a backup if I'm on vacation, uh, but normally you can just ping the person directly. Again, if you're unsure, please ping the team and one of us will make sure that it gets reviewed. Um, if there's other issues that you need help with or things are slow, we do have merge request coaches who can also help out with your merge request. Um, not just uh, writing, but also code changes if that's something you're interested in doing as well. For any other questions and feedback, you can send an email to contributors at gitlab.com and we'll get back to you uh, with an answer as soon as we can. Uh, I'd like to thank you all for being interested in contributing to the GitLab documentation projects. I myself was a contributor before an employee and it was a really uh, satisfying and enjoyable experience. And uh, I hope you enjoy it as much as I did and as much as I do now. Uh, so yes, thank you very much. And I look forward to seeing your submissions in the future.